Hi. Hi, Killer Curly Ten. Um, I've just jumped on to do a live to talk about my books. Um, so I have two books out. Um, through the passageway, it's a series. It's a fantasy series. Um, so it's gonna be five books all together so i have the first two published so it's called through the passageway and then the second one is called through the passageway a trio of evil so there's lots of fantasy lots of magic and lots of adventure in it so if that's what you're into great um so you can buy them on um amazon but you can also buy them on my website katiekeelyauthor.com so um i have this bundle bundle deal um on my website so you can buy the first two books for 20 euro and if you add this discount code this um coupon code when you put in your order um so it's called book discount and um you get free shipping so hello everybody So I'm going to read the synopsis of the first book, Through the Passageway, and let me know what you think. Annie, along with her sister Claire and her brother Daniel, find a hidden passageway in the attic of their home. They are transported to a magical world where an adventure of a lifetime awaits them. Meanwhile, in the Nafgrant Forest, Abigail has just learnt that she is the eagle warrior prophesied to defeat evil and save the people of her kingdom and ultimately the world she lives in. With the help of some new friends, including Annie, Claire and Daniel, can they work together to defend and bring peace to this world while discovering what their future has in store for them and just how brave they are to stand up to evil? Why not find out through the passageway? So that's the um, synopsis of the first book. And the two main characters, Abby and Annagale, their um, uh, journeys cross paths and they become great friends because they're both dealing with um just these massive changes to their own worlds even though they're different they can kind of relate to each other because they're both going through life changing situations and um when annie arrives in this world her and her brother and sister they find uncover a family secret and it just blows their minds turns their world upside down like the way when abigail finds out that she's the eagle warrior prophesies to save everyone turns her world upside down and she doesn't know what to do and so yeah they become great friends and bond through that so and so the second book through the passageway a trio of evil and which is this book here i'll read the synopsis annie and abigail find themselves in yet another adventure through the passageway they are once again saving the world of fantasia from evil although they face a new foe something of the past echoes with this latest challenge, causing both girls to wonder. Not only this, but Annie is trying to adjust to life in Asylvia and discover what is causing her mother Sophia's strange behaviour. Meanwhile, Abigail is settling into life as the evil warrior and leader of the Algarian people. She hopes that she can do a good job while discovering the extent of her own magic. Can they both, with the help of the people closest to them, defeat this evil or will be the dawn of a second darkness so that's the second book and the third book is gonna be um called dawn of a second darkness so my goal today is to see if i can um sell as many books as possible <laughs> so you can buy them off amazon sorry for the background noise it's people getting work done um so you can buy them off amazon but you can also buy them um through my website katiekeelyauthor.com where you can get this bundle deal 
and with this discount code with this coupon code um, it's a once off coupon so you can only use it for one order um, you can get free shipping so and uh, if you buy it if you buy this one through my website I can as well as the free shipping I'll be so I'll sign it for you and add in some um, through the passageway bookmarks So anyone out there like get in touch with me, leave a comment, what do you think? Or would you like me to read um part of the sana part of the prologue of the first book? I can read part of the book. And don't forget to tap the screen to let other people know that I'm on Hi Beryl, hi Cora. Beryl, I hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> um, yeah, my goal today for this uh, live is to um, sell as many copies of my books as possible. Um, so it's called Through the Passageway, it's a fantasy novel um, and it's going to be a series. So it's going to be a series of five books and I have the first two books published already which you can find on Amazon. We can also find on my website, katiekeelyauthor.com. The link to my website is in my uh, TikTok bio. Um, and my web on my website, you can get this bundle deal. So you can get the first two books for 20 euro. And um, <clears throat> if you add this one-off coupon in when you go to checkout, um, you'll get free shipping. So um, but that's it's only a once off coupon, so you can only buy, uh, you can only use it once. So, uh, hi Nelly, how are you? So my um my goal today is to sell as many of my books as possible. Um, I'm also working on the third book of the series, um, which is called Dawn of a Second Darkness.
Hi, Ellen. Thanks for the likes. Yes, it is for sale. The first two books are for sale on my website. Um, so it's katiekeelyauthor.com and that's where you can get this bundle here on. And if you put in this coupon code, um, you get free shipping. Hi, JO777. Um, so my aim today is to sell any amount of books that I can, of my books. Um, so it's called Through the Passage Rate. It's a fantasy series. So I have the first two books um, published already. You can get them on Amazon. And you can also get them on my website, kgkeelyauthor.com, where you can... Um, get this bundle deal you can get the two of them for 20 euro and if you use this coupon code and um, you can get free shipping when you order it so Owen, hi Owen, I'm writing, um, I'm working on the third book of the series, which is called Dawn of a, De Dawn of a Second Darkness. So hopefully that will be out maybe late next year, so... So for anyone who's just joined, I'm going to read the synopsis of the first two books and you can let me know what you think. So the first book, which is True the Passive Rate, this is it here. <clears throat> um, Annie, along with her sister Claire and her mother and her brother Daniel, find a hidden passageway in the attic of their home. They are transported to a magical world where an adventure of a lifetime awaits them. Meanwhile, in the Nat Grand Forest, <clears throat> Abigail has just learned that she is the eagle warrior prophesied to defeat evil and save the people of her kingdom and ultimately the world she lives in. 
With the help of some new friends, including Annie, Claire and Daniel, can they work together to defend and bring peace to this world while discovering what their future has in store for them and just how brave they are to stand up to evil? Why not find out through the passageway? So that's the first book. So the second book, which is Through the Passageway, A Trio of Evil. Um, anyway and Ab Annie and Abigail find themselves in yet another adventure through the passageway. They are once again saving the world of Fantasia from evil. Although they face a new foe, something of the past echoes with the latest challenge, causing both girls to wonder. Not only this, but Annie is trying to adjust to life in Lasuvia and discover what is causing her mother Sophia's strange behaviour. Meanwhile, Abigail is settling into life as the eagle warrior and leader of the Algerian people. She hopes that she can do a good job while discovering the extent of her own magic. Can they both, with the help of the people closest to them, defeat this evil, or will it be the dawn of a second darkness? So that's the second book. So the third book, which is which is what I'm um, working on at the minute, is called Dawn of a Second Darkness. So, And you can buy them on Amazon. But you can also go to my website and buy the bundle deal here um, for €20. Euro. And then if you add this once-off coupon code... Uh, book discount uh, to your order you can get free shipping so in Easton's no I don't um, that Owen I self publish so I haven't gotten into any of the books bookshops yet so it's all online so it's either Amazon or my website so and if you have sign if you buy them off the website then I can um, I see I send them out myself so um, any kind of um, orders that I get, get in I send them off pretty much straight away and I can sign them off and give you free um, through the passageway bookmarks then as well And in each of the books, um, you can find a map of Fantasia. This is the world of Fantasia. Can you you can see there all the different um all the different kingdoms, and then this bit up the middle, that's the Nafgran Forest. So it kind of separates the two kind of main kingdoms, the two biggest kingdoms, which is Asentaurus and Algeri. So when Annie, with her brother and sister, discover um discover Asentaurus, discover this world they come in they uh, come into Asentaurus first so and then Abigail is from Algera who is hiding in Afghan forest so and then travels to Asentaurus where she meets Annie so what age is this book recommended for um <clears throat> well it's recommended for pretty much anyone who loves fantasy <clears throat> um <clears throat> but um sorry <clears throat> But my, my nephew, I gave it to my nephew to read. <clears throat> and he's 10. So, um yeah, so from about that age and up. So, 
from about 9, 10 and up. Yeah, he loved it, so. But basically, if, you, if you're an adult and you love fantasy as well. Oh, amazing. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for the likes. I didn't, wasn't even paying attention to that on. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> So if you have any kids that like fantasy or <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my voice today. Um or if you like fantasy yourself, by all means give it a read. Hi everyone. So I'm going to um I'm going to read a short snippet from book 1. So this short snippet is about um the witch she's a little bit like a sorceress Eleanor from the book she's evil. And um this bit so to give a bit of backstory around her um she was kind of the king's right-hand woman and then <clears throat> but she was bullied relentlessly by the people who lived in the capital of Algeria called Navib of uh, mercilessly bullies and um but the king at the time was kind of oblivious to everything and he thought she had a great life even though he kept he kind of treated her like a performing monkey and um because she had magic he was constantly getting her to do all these magic tricks at his parties and all kind of treat her a little bit like a clown so um one particular day when the bullying was particularly bad um by the people who lived certain people who lived in Navit, she lashed out and um on like and in that lash out she um killed them so she was immediately arrested she didn't mean to it just she was so angry it came out and um, without her even realizing and um, she was immediately arrested and then chained up in the um, in the tower. She was um, visited by the king and he just couldn't understand why. And um, that everybody loved her and she was trying to say, no, 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 they didn't. You have no idea what my life is like here. And he's like, yes, 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 no, you're fine. And 
then she could feel the anger coming up again bubbling up inside her again and then she lashes out at him and kills the king and then so then she knew she had to escape so then she looked down her chains were broken but she knew she couldn't stay there so she she made a run for it and she escaped on a boat across the sea to the to the dark lands nobody really knows what happens there but um, particularly bad people are sent there criminals are sent there just to stay there and like yeah you're not coming back again so she escapes to that and um so this is this little snippet is kind of talking about her a little bit coming back and seeing that her the one and only friend she had has become king so she feels a lot better about that so before Eleonora had returned to Algera, having left her the dark lands across the sea, Julian realised he could no, not wait for her and that he would have to marry to produce an heir to rule the kingdom of Algera when he was gone. If he couldn't have Eleonora, King Julian decided his new bride must come from one of the rich families and when he had made his choice, all the unfortunate girl could do was oblige. It was not long before she gave him a son, and shortly after this boy's birth, Eleanor returned to cast her curse. Once the curse had been cast, Eleanor's powers and strength were completely diminished, and while the people of Algera were led to believe she had been killed or had disappeared into oblivion, she had in fact retreated to the abandoned quarter of Naboth, where she used to live, and she closed herself off from the world and everyone in it, except for the king. Julian knew where she had fled and visited her often. He brought her food and supplies so that she would be comfortable in her isolation and provided her some company like he always had when she lived in the castle. He did all he could to help her recover and regain her strength so he could once again so she could once again take her place as his adviser and terrorize the kingdom in whatever way she liked until her vengeance was truly satisfied. I will do whatever it takes to help you restore your strength and power no matter how long it takes, he told her. Good, thank you, she smiled back. As soon as this started happening, people across Algera began hiding their firstborns the best way they could. For these parents, they would rather die than hand them over to, into slavery. Unfortunately, some failed against the king's balderdash and their children were marched away. This brought a significant amount of grief and sorrow to the people all across Algeria. Since then, this has been the way of life, and with every new king there came his army in search for all the firstborn children with this curse. So that's a little snippet of book one. Just so you know what, um, a little bit what it's like. So my aim today is to uh, try and sell as many as possible of my books so you can buy them off Amazon or you can buy them on you can buy my books off Amazon or you can buy them on my website uh, which is katiekeelyauthor.com uh, the uh, fantasy series so I have the first two books published and if you buy them through my website um, which the link is in my bio in my TikTok um, you can get this um, 20 euro bundle deal for and you can get the first two books um and then if you add this coupon code book discount to your order um you can get a free shipping as well and i'll be able to sign them and send you some through the passageway um through the passageway bookmarks as well So my aim is to sell as many as possible. So.
and I'm working on book three at the minute, which is called um, Dawn of a Second Darkness. So I'm going to read the synopsis of the first two books so you have an idea of what the series is going to be about. So the first book, Through the Passageway, is Annie, along with her sister Claire and her brother Daniel, find a hidden passageway in the attic of their home. They are transported to a magical world where an adventure of a lifetime awaits them. Meanwhile, in the Nafgrant Forest, Abigail has just learnt that she is the Eagle Warrior, prophesied to defeat evil and save the people of her kingdom and ultimately the world she lives in. With the help of some new friends, including Annie, Claire and Daniel, can they work together to defend and bring peace to this world while discovering what their future has in store for them and just how brave they are to stand up to evil? Why not find out through the passageway? So that's the first book there. Um, so the second book is, uh, this. it's called Through the Passageway, A Trio of Evil and the synopsis for this one is annie and abigail find themselves in yet another adventure through the passageway they are once again saving the world of fantasia from evil although they face a new foe something of the past echoes with the latest challenge causing both girls to wonder not only this but annie is trying to adjust to life in lasuvia and discover what is causing her mother sophia's strange behavior meanwhile abigail is settling into life as the eagle warrior a leader of the Algarian people. She hopes that she can do a good job while discovering the extent of her own magic. Can they both, with the help of the people closest to them, defeat this evil, or will it be the dawn of a second darkness? So that's what the third book is going to be called, Dawn of a Second Darkness. So, And that I'm working on that right now. Um, so that will be out kind of, hopefully, kind of late next year. So that's the plan anyway. So... So my aim today is to be able to sell as many as possible. I'll be doing this all week, so. And um, this uh, discount, this bu uh, coupon code um, is only in my website. So katiekeelyauthor.com and any orders that I get, um, I pretty much send, I send them out the same day, so. And I send, I post everywhere all over the world unfortunately I don't have a TikTok shop because um, a TikTok shop hasn't arrived in Ireland yet unfortunately
snippet from the book. So this is when Annie, Claire and Daniel um, enter into the world of Fantasioc and their like initial reactions to it. So Claire tried to open it but found the door quite stiff. Daniel and Annie helped her and with the three of them pushing against it, the door finally budged. Then, without warning, it swung open fully and the three of them rolled through, landing on their backs. Looking up, they were quite surprised to see the night sky full of stars. I thought it was raining out, Annie was the first to speak. Something tells me this isn't a, this isn't safe, commented Daniel. The three of them stood up and took a glance around at where they were. I know this seems like the most obvious question, but where are we? Annie asked. The two sisters stood barefoot in a rather gravelly surface with their brother. The night was clear, not a single cloud in the sky. The dark navy sky had so many stars in it that the sky was almost blocked out by them. In certain parts of the sky, the stars formed clusters, where in other areas they were more spread out. The moon was large and full, casting a silvery light over the land below. The flat plains below them were made up of scorched grass that was rejuvenated in preparation to bloom again. Plunked in the middle of the vast pl- flat plains was a city that looked incredibly out of place in its countryside surroundings. The buildings within the city were made with dark strong timber that looked as if it w- could withstand whatever mother nature threw at it. Even the roofs were made of the strong wood. These buildings came in all shapes and sizes over the vast chunk of the land. Small lights could be seen flickering in some of the windows indicating that people were still awake at this unearthly time within the city. Thin lines of smoke drifted intermittently up into the sky from chimneys hidden amongst the city's buildings. A spike could be seen sticking out, sticking up out of the city skyline as well. It was wide at its base and gradually became skinnier as it rose and at the top of this spike a cross was placed indicating the place of worship for the city. It was a different building, however, that stood out the, the most amongst the cluster of the city. Even though it was from the stained dark wood as the rest of the city's buildings, this one was more striking than anything else they could see in the city. It was at least three times as wide as any of the other buildings and just as tall. There were turrets and towers jutting out of the main building and the three siblings couldn't even begin begin to guess at the number of floors that might be inside. There were statues lo- looming yet friendly looking attached to parts of the building, carved out of the wood just like everything else was. But Claire, Annie and Daniel were too far away to make out any detail. All they knew was that the statues looked like some sort of animal. What really made the teenagers googly eyed was when they realised this building was in fact a castle. It stood smack bang in the middle of the city, casting its shadow, even at night, over the buildings around it. This was a city ruled by a royal. Surrounding the city was an extraordinarily large wall that acted as a barrier of protection for the people living within. The sturdiness of this wall, with its pointed tips high up off the ground, gave the impression that no amount of force, however great, would be able to get through. Beyond the city, in the distance, was a pitch black mass that stretched out in a straight line as far as the eye could see. Claire, Annie and Daniel all had the same thought, although none of them knew it. This black mass could be the edge of a forest. I don't know where we are, said Claire, just as confused as Annie. I'm definitely dreaming decided Daniel, who was standing in between his sisters. And I wish he had at least worn a pair of socks to bed, he added. Immediately, Claire and Annie reached out and pinched him on either arm. Ouch! That didn't mean pinch me, Daniel said, flinching away and scowling at his two sisters. You're definitely not dreaming, concluded Annie. This is too real to be a dream. What do we do? asked Claire, mesmerised by what surrounded her. Well, we can't get back to the attic unless either of you know how to climb climb up a sloping tunnel, said Annie. I think paying a visit to that town seems like our only option, Daniel decided. 
I suppose you're right, agreed Claire. The three of them started to climb down the side of the mountain, trying not to cut their feet on the razor-sharp socks. They soon came to find that not falling turned out to be a much harder task than initially imagined. Is this all really real? said Claire, awestruck. Well, it can hardly be a dream. The tree was couldn't be having the same one at the exact same time, Annie pointed out. That's true, agreed Claire. At the bottom of the mountain, they paused for a moment to catch their breath. Even though there was a gravelly path most of the way down the side of the mountain, they were met with parts that were quite treacherous, that required them, required them to climb across sharp rocks and unstable surfaces in their bare feet that grew colder the further down they went. The air was quite mild, yet a cool breeze blew softly around them, making them shiver slightly. To keep from freezing, they began their trek across the stretched out land before them. The walk through the land of Asantaurus and its dried out yellow grass, which made the place look relatively bland. It was as if this place had received far too much sun and nowhere near enough rain in the last couple of weeks. The only thing that stood out to them in this otherwise dull looking place was the city, city they would come to learn was called Lesuvia in the distance. There was a lot of ground to cover between the mountain and the city, with nothing or no one to be seen in between, except for the crickets, that is. The familiar sound kept the three siblings silent, listening to the chirping crickets as they walked forward, trying to reach Lesuvia as quickly as they could. By the time they got to the city, the three of them were met by two gigantic wooden doors blocking their entry. The wall around the city was even taller than they realised from their vantage point on the mountain. From where they had stood on the mountain, this wall around the city seemed a lot smaller. But now even simply staring towards the top of it made them feel dizzy. How to get through, they wonder, How do we get through, they wondered to themselves. The sturdy st- thickness of the wood meant that ploughing through it was going to be near impossible. Trying to haul themselves over it would be just as difficult, even if they had a catapult to hurl themselves across the top. They, w- they either wouldn't make it high enough, or they would, but they'd be impaled by the spikes lining the top. No one with the fear of heights would take a job that involved standing far to top this wall. Now what, asked Daniel. It seemed like their adventure was over before it had even begun, but it wasn't. May I help you? interrupted a voice out of the darkness. Out of the darkness stepped a, a young man who looked like he was visiting them from medieval times. He was dressed head to toe in metal armour, his helmet clutched in his hand, glinting in the moonlight. Across his chest was the image of a dark red unicorn that took up the crest of the city. With his other hand, the boy held a long spear, pointing the sharp end towards the three siblings. A shield sat on the ground, behind him propped up against the wooden fence. It also bore the dark red unicorn. Um, we were just wondering where we are, gulped, gulped Daniel. You have arrived at the city of Lesuvia, in the land of Asantaurus, declared the soldier. State your name and what your business is here, he demanded, eyeing them suspiciously. Well, my name is Annie, and Annie began. Hang on, what did you say your name was? interrupted the soldier. Annie, she stated, a little bewildered. The young man stared a little closer at her, gasping. Now, I'm going to leave it there before I um, I don't want to give away too much. So, hopefully you liked that. And you can buy my books on Amazon. But you can also buy them on my website where you can get this bundle deal for 20 euro you can get the first two books of the series and if you add this coupon code uh, to your order book discount um you can get um you can get free shipping so and i'm gonna head off because i have to eat soon and then get ready to go to work so yeah please 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 um 
if you love fantasy and adventure and magic please 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 buy my book that will mean quite a lot and if you buy it off my website i'll be able to sign it for you as well so have a good day everyone hopefully i'm gonna try and get on later tonight as well so